So we're delighted to welcome you uh, to a, a webinar entitled From Hoping to Coping with the Pandemic, an Integrated Approach to Oral Health in India. Uh, my colleague Niti Daftari, who is the Program Manager for Global Initiatives at Transforming Faces and also uh, very much the host of Circle of Professionals. Please take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our 27th webinar. Um, uh, so uh, we have uh, here with us today from uh, Chennai, India, the dental and orthodontic team of Sri Ramchandra Institute of Higher Education and Research at Srihar. Uh, today, this five five-member dental team will take us through their journey of using a comprehensive and integrated approach to promoting oral health in India based on patient-specific needs. Once again, we will be having simultaneous interpretation in Spanish, for which we have uh, Benjamin and Eva uh, on this webinar joining us from Chile. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, you will see an interpretation button. If you click on that button and select Spanish, you will be able to hear the rest of this webinar in Spanish. So please go ahead and select the language of your choice. Some participation tips to make the most of this webinar. If your bandwidth allows, please keep your video on. Uh, feel free to use chat to type in your name and let us know uh, where you're from. Uh, if you could, please use uh, display your Zoom screen name as your full name to make it easier for us. Uh, to identify and connect with each other. Uh, while the presentation is on, we request you to keep yourselves on mute, uh, but at any point during the presentation or later, uh, feel free to uh, type in your questions and comments or to use the reactions button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, after the presentation is done, we'll open for discussion. Uh, you can ask your questions either via chat or on video. Uh, if you'd like to address the panel yourselves, uh, uh, you could, uh, you know, use the raise hand feature on Zoom. The agenda for today, uh, we will begin this 60 minute webinar with a very quick overview of the COCP objectives and sponsors, uh, which will be followed by the panel presentation. This will last for roughly 25 minutes, uh, after which uh, it will be followed by the discussion and questions for the remaining half hour or so. The COCP has three core objectives. Our focus is on comprehensive cleft care in low and middle income countries. Our aim is to facilitate networking and collaboration to communicate the impact and learning that's happening within cleft care and to support the growth of local teams in implementing comprehensive care. Finally, uh, the COCP is made possible thanks to these 11 international charity organizations, all of who believe in supporting comprehensive cleft care in low and middle income countries. I now hand over to Hugh to introduce our speakers and take over from me. Thanks, Niti. Uh, lovely to see everyone. Uh, my name is Hugh Brewster, as Niti mentioned, uh, and I'm the Executive Director of Transforming Faces in Toronto, uh, but here today on behalf of the Circle of Professionals, uh, including our newest uh, sponsor, uh, which is the Nordhoff Cranial Facial uh, Foundation from Taiwan. Uh, you probably heard uh, their overview of uh, their approach and their partnership with Changgung Memorial Hospital. If, I, if you did miss that, it is on our YouTube channel, uh, which Niti will talk about at the end of uh, there, but a warm welcome uh, to Linus uh, and, and others. Uh, today, as Niti mentioned, uh, really talking about an integrated approach to oral health in India, uh, really sponsored by our, our partners at uh, Srihar or Sri Ramachandra in Chennai, India. Uh, and their focus really has been on orthodontic management for children with cleft lip and palate, uh, and not necessarily just with folks who can come directly to uh, the, the, the cleft center or the hospital or the university in this case, uh, but really moving out to underserved LMIC communities. So we're delighted to have Dr. Shiva, Dr. Banu, Dr. Vignesh, Dr. Mutu, Dr. Akila uh, to join us and talk a little bit about what they've been learning and uh, about how to increase the eff efficacy and completion of children's treatment, uh, even in difficult circumstances. Uh, so without further ado, please, team, take it away. I think it's Dr. Akila who's going to uh, kick us off. And if the technology uh, 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 fairies can come and help us right now, oh, hopefully it'll be an efficient and smooth transition. Uh, but we're delighted to hear what you have to, uh, what you've brought for us uh, today. Well done, the video's coming. Yeah, is my screen visible? Uh, not yet. Yeah, now we see it. Perfect. Yep. And if you just put a presentation mode, yeah. you success, success. Uh, the, 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 the universe has aligned. Go ahead. 
Okay, thank you. Warm, warm wishes from the dental team at Sri Ramchandra Institute of Higher Education and Research. Myself, Akila Ganesh, will be briefing to you about the dental services which we've been rendering in partnership with Transforming Faces. Followed by my colleagues, Dr. Shiva Subramanyam, who will be talking about the orthodontic management, and Dr. Banupriya, who will be presenting us the online activities which, we, which we've been doing during the pandemic. So this is our dental team at Sriha, uh, comprising of the departments from public health dentistry, pediatric and preventive dentistry, and orthodontics, and, ortho and then official orthopedics. And these, uh, we have been associated with organizations like Smile Train and Transforming Faces, for more than a decade for rendering cleft care to many underserved people. Our dental campus at Shrihar is fully functional with all, in all specialties uh, with a state of an art infrastructure. We render services in all specialties of dentistry. The community services for cleft care has been rendered by the three specialities, mainly the periodontics and preventive dentistry, which provides comprehensive pediatric oral health care anticipatory guidance. Public health dentistry, which provides comprehensive oral health care and oral health education. The dent of or, the orthodontics and dentofacial orthopedics, which manages the correction of malalignment and continuous follow-ups through monthly camps. Our project activities are extended to three districts in Tamil Nadu, South India. These include the Kadalur, the Tiruvannamalai and Kanchipuram. Initially, the residents of Tirvannamalai and Kadalur had to travel on an average of about uh, 55 miles and which would take around two hours of travel, which means uh, to the nearest tertiary care center for the cleft care. This was an economic burden for them because they had to, because most of them were daily wages and they had loss of livelihood. Thanks to the transforming faces at this juncture, with the support of whom? we were able to uh, travel to these centers, which were on an average of around 100 miles from our campus, and it took around five to six hours of travel. The patients who were referred from, from the centers to our campus for more advanced dental care were also provided the treatment free of cost, as well as they were also provided the required allowances. In India, being a uh, middle income country, traveling about 100 miles by road might take around five to six hours. Also, we need to reach Kadalur, uh, for which we need to cross a union territory by name Puducherry. For this, we required uh, official permission from the police officials. So these were a few hindrances which we had to cross before we reach our centers. But we were able to manage it well for all these years and hope we continue the same for many more to come. So these are the pictures of our centers at Kadalur and Tirvanamalai. Uh, the Kanchipuram Center, we have not yet gone in person considering the pandemic situation, but we have been engaged in online activities with those patients. With advances in technology, uh, we have adapted new innovative methods for rendering dental care, which includes the use of the mobile dental van, the mobile phones and teletherapy. I will be briefing you about our mobile dental van while my colleague Dr. Banupriya will be talking to you about the use of mobile phones and teletherapy. Our initial mobile dental van has now been transformed into a state-of-the-art mobile dental van, not to, to be very specific, one of the best in our country, with upgraded facilities for better dental care at shorter time periods. I should mention the inbuilt generators, which are our very unique feature, and this helped to serve us in those rural areas where we need not uh, rely on their power supply. Apart from the dental care, we thought we should give them psychosocial support, especially in this pandemic days. So to celebrate the National Cleft Day on February 8, 2021, we had organized a virtual program for them to exhibit their talents. We were astonished by the number of responses we had. There was very active participation from all our patients, from all the centers. So these are a few pictures of them showing their uh, exhibiting their skills. You know, it was in the form of drawing, painting, cooking, and various, they shared videos as well. This was very well appreciated. Just briefing about the census, which we've been doing for the past uh, five years from 2015 to 2020. Our, la our last camp, which we went in person was in March, 2020, just before the pandemic. So we've been to seven camps in Tirvanamalai and uh, around 662 dental consultations. 
and 19 camps in Kadalur with about 665 dental consultations. So these are a few glimpses of our services which we've been providing at the various uh, centers. Now I would hand on my uh, session to Dr. Shiva Subramanian. He would be talking to you about managing the orthodontic part of these patients. Over to you, sir. Hello, all. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We can. We can. Sounds great. Right. Thank you, Dr. Akila. Uh, that was great. Uh, Dr. Akila? Right. I warm greetings from Chennai. I'm Dr. Sivas Brahmanian, a uh, cleft and kidney fish orthodontist. Uh, I start my presentation with a, a photo. Next slide, please. Right. This photo is a very important, significant one for us because this marks the beginning of a um, partnership between Sri Ramasandra University and the Transforming Faces in the year 2005 and 2006 to develop a community-based healthcare model to provide or render healthcare services to the cleft lip and palate children in the communities. Now, how is this cleft care model different from other models? In the fact that in this model, all the healthcare professionals related to treatment of cleft lip and palate have to travel all the way from the university or the hospital to the communities where the children are residing and they have to deliver the services. <clears throat> and thereby reducing the burden of the child clef, uh, child with the cleft lip and palate and the family. Now it was in the year 2005, 2006, under the development of the uh, uh, community-based healthcare model, the Thiruvannamalai district, which is almost 200 miles from Chennai, was adopted into the project. Now here you can see Mr. Uh, 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 one of the officials from uh, uh, TF and uh, our uh, HOD of our Department of Orthodontics, Mr. Vignesh Kailasam, are in an intense discussion because no such model has been prevalent before. This was the first time they are trying to uh, implement the orthodontic phase in the community. Next slide, please. Right. Now, we started very humbly. Now, this building which is behind represents a primary healthcare center in Thiruvannamalai. So we have to hire a small space in the primary healthcare center to set up our orthodontic office with a very less inventory so that we can do orthodontic treatment. Now you can see all the patients sitting along with Mr. Esteban. Uh, these are the first batch of patients whom we uh, offered orthodontic treatment. Next slide, please. Now, can, pandemic and cleft care. Why is cleft care most important in pandemic? Now, treatment of cleft lip and palate patients remains a priority because it influences the survival of these patients in some cases. Now, those cases where the cleft defect is so huge, the primary care has to be rendered irrespective of whether the pandemic is there or not there. Now, again, a time-sensitive nature of certain pediatric craniofacial procedures must be considered. Like procedures like NAM or uh, primary closure, surgical closure of the palate, if delayed, then there may be a problem that the, the child may develop a speech defect. For that, to correct the speech defect, there may be involvement of another additional surgical procedure and that will again influence the orthognathic surgery later. So it is imperative that the, whether pandemic or non-pandemic, cleft care, primary cleft care for the patients has to be administered. According to one UN data, around 20.1 million babies are born in India between March 2020 to December 2020. So this roughly translates to almost 28,500 plus new babies born with cleft in India. Now, if you're going to delay the primary care, we do not know what is going to happen to these kids as they come for treatment. Now, are we able to predict it? We cannot predict it. But one thing is for sure, when these kids come for treatment later, it's going to add more burden to the cleft and the craniofacial team. Next slide, please. Now, the general challenges, now pandemic has challenged everything. It has challenged the three her transforming faces community-based healthcare model because our healthcare professionals were not able to travel to the community to render services. Similarly, the patients were not able to come to the hospital. Now, because of pandemic and lockdown, there were job losses and then job uncertainty for parents and caregivers actually altered the attitude of the parents towards the cliff lip and palate patients. So this would have psychologically affected the child. And hence, this has to be kept in mind always. Next slide, please. Now, coming to the orthodontic challenges, now a regular orthodontic treatment duration, an average orthodontic treatment duration is almost 18 months. Now with the cliff patient and pandemic, it has become the longest treatment duration. There are two challenges for orthodontic, uh, particularly uh, uh, for the patient who are already exist existing in the uh, project, whom we started treatment, we were not able to progress because uh, monthly 
uh, review of these patients were not possible. And second, the induction of new patients in the project is not possible because of the pandemic. Next slide, please. Right, now orthodontic emergencies are issues based on urgent treatment needs. We categorized into four uh, emergencies which would require treatment. The one is an absolute emergency. Now one is an accidental swallowing of the part of the appliance. Now we had a case wherein we delivered an uh, expansion device. Now we instructed the parents, usually we instruct the parents to activate the screws. We asked them to report back after one week. Now here is a case wherein we uh, uh, delivered an expansion device to uh, increase the uh, size of the maxilla. But here, the parent was so judiciously doing that she forgot to stop. He just did it continuously. And then one fine day, we uh, gave an appointment. The expansion was done. We want to remove the appliance. We, while trying to remove the appliance, the appliance just collapsed in the patient's mouth. And here we can see, I just kept the appliance in the tray. I was suspecting that one of the part is missing. So I asked the patient whether did he swallow in the event of removing the appliance. The patient actually said, no, he did not swallow. But then to have the benefit of doubt, I informed the patient's mother and then we took an abdominal radiograph. Here we were able to see he, he, the patient did in fact swallow a little, bit of the, uh, little piece of the expansion of device. Now we immediately uh, <clears throat> consulted the appropriate medical uh, surgeons. The surgeons gave us, a, gave us some drug for the patient and they said to wait for seven days. So well, the close tag on the patient at all times. Now the second radiograph is taken around at five days. We can see here the actually the piece of swollen uh, um, uh, appliance was moving through the digestive tract. And at the end of seventh day, the uh, piece actually came out even uh, without any uh, big event. So we have been doing expansion of the maxilla for almost, I've been doing expansion of the maxilla for almost 13 years. I never had any uh, thing like this. So it gave us one important lesson. So whenever or whatever type of expander that we use, now, before retrieving it, you need to rewind the appliance and then remove it so that the appliance will come in one piece. That was one emergency that we faced during the pandemic. The second is chances of inhalation of foreign body can happen, but it did not happen to us. And the third is an abscess. Now, again, the third last photo here, we, I, I delivered a expander which was cemented under the uh, patient uh, maxillary teeth. And the emphasis was placed, uh, instructed for the patient to keep a good oral hygiene, but then he just overlooked this instruction and there was accumulation of food and debris. This caused in, in inflammation and irritation of the gingiva. The gingiva began to grow and it covered the uh, appliance. So we need to call the patient immediately and we retrieve the patient. Next slide, please. Now the next condition which would require an urgent attention is, it could be a severe pain because of any reason, it could be a broken molar band, it can be a broken appliance, it can be a protruding arch wire. In the first picture, we can see one of the patients removed all the molar bands and removed most of the brackets. So we had to call the patient to, to restore the remaining appliances and restore the appliance in full form. The second picture we see the uh, patient had actually broken the molar uh, band and retrieved all by herself. In the third picture, we can see the wire is protruding. Now, usually the wire will protrude if the patient does a horizontal stroke of brushing. Now, we should, usually when you give braces, we instruct the patient to have a vertical stroke of brushing. So uh, the wire doesn't slide. Next slide, please. Right, the third condition is which requires delayed attention are conditions like broken elastics, appliance activation, and orthopedic appliance adjustment. Now, we had one instance where we have delivered an ortho uh, uh, expanded device for the maxilla and we instructed the parent to activate the appliance. But then after two months, nothing was done because the pa patient's parents told that he was very afraid. So I told them, this is not of an emergency. So let the appliance be in the place in the mouth with the emphasis placed on maintaining good oral hygiene and not to break the appliance. Next slide, please. And the last, uh, uh, factor which involve a minimal, which will have a minimal attention is conditions like a loose module or a debonded bracket attached to the arch wire. Here you can see in the first picture on the left side, the module has been is, uh, just slightly moved from the one of the wings of the bracket. So we ask the patient to use a toothpick and then adjust it back, pull it back to the bracket. On the right hand picture, you can see the modules have completely come in two of the brackets. So we advise the patients to use an orthodontic wax to compress, and compress it so that the brackets will not debond. Next slide, please. Right, now we categorized, we were able to categorize four conditions which would require uh, treatment based on the emergencies, but how are you gonna do it? The, we, um, now telemedicine is one of the technologies used for providing global healthcare services. Now in Ramachandra, we have a dedicated telemedicine center where we use 
on every monthly basis to share our experiences and to learn from other centers. But there is not a dedicated, we don't have any uh, dedicated telemedicine center in the uh, Thirunamalai uh, district. So uh, there's a practical difficulty in implementing telemedicine. Next slide, please. So during the pandemic, a mobile device based teleconsultation, teledentistry, and teleorthodontics is uh, used to provide cost effective, regular, and timely expert advice to caregivers and patients. Next slide, please. Right. Now, coming to the orthodontic, customized orthodontic triage, we created a customized orthodontic triage which involved a telephone triage first to know the signs and symptoms of potential COVID 19 infection. The first, whenever the patient calls us on the initial contact, we ask whether the patient has got COVID, any of the family members have got COVID. If so, then we increase the alertness level. We also do a telephone triage for vaccination for COVID-19 patient, uh, for COVID-19 infections. Now, if the patient is an adult, we ask for the uh, in, uh, vaccination history and for the family members, we do the same thing. Now, in Ramachandra University provides a free vaccination. So we in transfer this information to the patient so that they can take advantage of this vaccination. Next slide, please. Right, now we have categorized the emergencies. Now we're gonna, do, during pandemic, we still have to monitor our patients and provide healthcare services because we, the patients have got appliances in the mouth. Now by these three methods, we were able to monitor them and also provide healthcare services. The methods are the teleorthodontics, virtual assistance and appointment scheduling. Next slide, please. Right, in teleorthodontics, we do it on a monthly basis, wherein a preliminary patient inquiry about the patient well-being and the condition of the appliance as a whole is taken into account. Now, if the internet service is good, we also provide audio visual aids and photo sharing. Here we can see two photos wherein orthodontic residents are involved in this program, thereby they also get to know about the cleft lip and palate management. Now here in the first photo, we can see one of the patient is inquiring about the general health of the patient. The patient being a part-time agricultural Agri agriculture is working in agricultural land due to a uh, internet good strong internet connection we were able to uh, uh, connect to him and uh, ask him about that in the second photo we can see one of the again uh, orthodontic resident is inquiring about trying to uh, resolve a minor issue which the patient has got with the brackets now number of orthodontic orthodontics patients are 19 in thiruvamalai and kadalur it is 15 next slide please Right, now if the issue is not, is sol not uh, solved by teleorthodontic method, we raise the level and we go to the uh, virtual assistance method in which here a clinically assisted virtual assistance with a concerned specialist is given. Now in the teleorthodontics, it is with the one orthodontist with so many patients, whereas in a virtual assistant program, it is only one with one orthodontist and one uh, patient. So here in the management of different situations like breakages, mucosal impingement of the appliance, appliance activation, and accident swallowing, all are uh, direct uh, instructions are given to the patient by the orthodontist. Here we can see one of the uh, uh, virtual orthodontics program wherein we uh, uh, delivered an orthodontic appliance in the middle of the activation. The patient got panicked. He called us and he said that, I don't know something's wrong is happening because he there was a space be beginning between two central incisors. So we assured him that that is a correct way of activation. We, we uh, gave him the confidence and we asked him to continue with emphasis on maintaining a good oral health. Now that is one part. In the virtual assistant, we also provide self-help video assistance for those patients who are not able to understand our instructions. Now we try to provide them with small videos, uh, which are for one minute. Now, there are various videos during pandemic season put forward by various associations like British Association of Orthodontics, uh, American Cliff Lip and Craniofacial Orthodontics. Now, that they particularly cater to simple problems like what to do if uh, the wire is protruding outside, what to do if the, there's a broken bracket. Now, if there's a broken bracket, how do you move the bracket along the uh, wire and attach it and make it firm with the adjacent bracket, which is very strong? So, these videos are provided only to those patients who don't understand the orthodontist instruction via virtual assistance program. We don't supply this videos to everybody because everybody, we don't want everybody to become adventurous and meddle with the appliances. Next slide, please. The last one, if the issue is not resolved by, resolved by teleorthodontics or by virtual assistance, then the only option that we have is to put an appointment schedule. So here we have one patient wherein we did distraction osteogenesis of the anterior maxillary segment. We have a, by, with an inter, intraoral distractor. Now we, ha, we, we, had a, we had a call from the patient saying that the appliance is broken. 
but he was not able to describe what it was so we had to call the patient and then once we called the patient on examination we found that the band on one of the molars was broken and it was impinging got embedded into the gums so we retrieved that we were able to retrieve that distractor intraoral distractor and the embedded band and then we fabricated a new distractor next slide please now if you're going to bring the patient to our op then there are certain guidelines that has to be uh, followed now any outpatient visit should be carefully considered and kept to a minimum every patient should be treated as a potential positive because due for orthodontic treatment we don't do a rt pcr test so it's it's always good to have maintain a good uh, high level of alertness a medical mask for the patient is mandatory in the waiting room along with social distancing temperature check temperature check and hand wash is compulsory at the entrance of the hospital the patients with respiratory symptoms should be separated from other patients any patient who report to hospital without prior intimation or appointments if the reason is of low priority they should be reprogrammed next slide please uh, here is the protocol put forward by the infection control uh, team here we see the outside the chairs have been uh, placed in social distancing play norm once the patient comes he is asked to uh, wash this hand with the soap and water uh, in a makeshift uh, arrangement which is placed in front of the dental college then the temperature is checked then he is allowed to go enter into the hospital inside the hospital again he is inquired about the why the nature of the visit to the hospital based on the department for example if he's got an orthodontic emergency he is asked to go to the orthodontic department and upon resolving the issue he is supposed to get back fast outside so that he he doesn't roam around in the hospital next slide please right in the orthodontic department uh, uh, procedures can be carried out with an isolated room with a negative suction or a high particulate air filtration system a uh, use of ppe and n95 mask head cover double gloves and face shield is a mandatory not only for the orthodontist but also for the assistant a biomedical waste which is generated should be discarded appropriately next slide please now basic instructions are maintaining excellent oral hygiene three times brushing and the use of fluoride mouthwash during pandemic avoid low uh, use a low sugar diet avoid snacks with with high sugar content to prevent dental caries and avoid hard or sticky food so that it will not break the plants next slide please now teething problems in adapting to new technologies are loss of internet services now that rarely happens if it happens we need to uh, reprogram our tele orthodontic uh, Uh, program to an another date limitations the number of people having a smartphone now these days most of the people have a smartphone but then if the patient or the parent doesn't have a smartphone then we need to employ a community based volunteer to go uh, to ask them to go to their home but then it increases the risk for risk for the patient as well as the community based volunteer limited intraoral examination capabilities even the patient has got a smartphone we will not be able to do a complete intraoral examination next slide please right now future scope now one important thing that we learned during pandemic or rather the pandemic taught us was whether a pandemic or non pandemic this modified orthodontic triage can be developed into an integrated software for e orthodontic office or a mobile orthodontic triage and it should have three key features it should have an interactive communication mode artificial intelligence to an extent to give an automated solution and it should have a gps tracking so if the patient has got developed an emergency in the middle of the night now the software should be able to guide the patient to a nearby hospital so i hope to answer uh, the questions after the presentation thank you for your kind attention thank you dr shiva and we have one more component from this dynamic team at ramachandra uh, and then definitely please uh, feel free to to type either questions or comments along the way and we'll we'll, we'll start gathering those together Dr. Banu Priya Dr. Banu Priya if you could unmute yourself We just got one more component uh, out of this team to, to to provide an overview and then we'll have some uh, time definitely for discussion and questions I see your hand Dr. Krishendu but we'll wait till uh, the last component's done and get them circle back to you Is my screen visible Perfect And again if you did come in late uh, there is interpretation into Spanish at the button at the bottom of your screen. Please go ahead Dr. Banupriya. Uh thank you Dr. Shiva. Uh, I'm happy to be here. This is Dr. Banupriya, the project dentist from the Cliff team of Shrihar. I'll be presenting a snapshot about the multidisciplinary teledentistry approach adopted by our team in promoting the oral health of a Cliff patient during this pandemic. My overview will be about background, teledentistry, definition and types, aim and objectives, teledentistry process, 
data, challenges faced, and conclusion. Background. Dental diseases are preventable. Despite advances in oral health care in the past few decades, the prevalence of dental diseases is found to be high in certain groups, including children with orofacial cleft. Oral health of an individual can be improved with systematic preventive strategies like regular dental examinations, oral health education, use of preventive measures like systemic and topical fluorides, pit and fissure sealants, and diet modification. According to this pandemic made everyone aware of the importance of primary prevention. Primary prevention is crucial in containing cost, preventing unnecessary hospital access, and improving timelines of care. With this in mind, the dental team always paid adequate attention to the oral health of our cleft patients right from the beginning. But with the onset of pandemic, our regular activities were suspended and only emergencies were carried out. But still, we want to carry out our care for our patients. So we adapted to the emerging modality of healthcare, teledentistry. Teledentistry, as defined by Cook in 1997, is a practice of using video conferencing technology to diagnose and provide advice about treatment over a distance. Though it came into existence a couple of decades back, its practice increased drastically only during this pandemic. According to American Dental Association, teledentistry could be delivered in four different ways, namely synchronous method or the live video chat between the caregiver and the patient, asynchronous or the store and forward method, remote patient monitoring and mobile health. In our approach, we adapted the synchronous method and the mobile health. According to literature, teledentistry has various subunits namely teleconsultations, telediagnosis, telesurgery, telemonitoring, teletriage, and teleeducation. We adapted teleconsultations, telemonitoring, and teleeducation in our approach. Our aim was to promote the oral health of our cleft patients in an economic manner with the help of a cost-effective, reliable tool. Objectives were to provide uninterrupted oral health education to our cleft patients during this pandemic, to identify high-risk groups and triage patients for secondary care. So going to the process of teledentistry, uh, the project has appointed community-based rehabilitation workers, known as the CVR workers, in different project areas. These workers are our local partners who actually provide support in uh, continuing our dental care to our cleft patients. So for our teledentistry process, we saw the help of these workers. So initially, we started the process providing an orientation to these CBR workers that we sensitized to them about the importance of oral health and teledentistry. So they were instructed to update the contact list of all the enrolled patients. Once they updated the list, we decided, we, were, we instructed them to make appointments for them with the patients on a daily basis. So we restricted our appointments to five patients per day uh, to carry out our teleconsultations, preferably through WhatsApp video call. And we decided two time slots, one in the morning and other in the afternoon. And patients were given the flexibility of two, choosing either, the, either of the time slots at their convenience. Uh, this is a pictogram explaining the workflow of the teleconsultation procedure. Uh, the project dentist, pediodontic graduate and the orthodontic graduate were located at the dental hospital. The community-based rehabilitation worker arranged for, made arrangements for the teleconsultations between the cleft for individuals and the project dentist. The project dentist initially provided the teleconsultation and oral hygiene instructions to them. In case the patient was in the age category of zero to seven years, an age-appropriate anticipatory guidance was provided to the parent and the child by a pediodontic graduate. And for those patients who are under orthodontic treatment, an orthodontic graduate was available to review them. The entire process, we focused on providing oral hygiene instructions and anticipatory guidance covering all the six domains, namely the growth and development of the teeth, oral hygiene, oral hygiene, oral habits, diet and nutrition, trauma prevention, and fluoride. These are few uh, screenshots taken during the teleconsultation process. In the first picture, you could see the project dentist, a CBR worker, a dental nurse, a project executive joining the call, and a patient complaining about his oral health condition. In the second one, you could see the brushing technique being demonstrated to a periodontic patient. On the third one, you could see a periodontic patient complaining about her uh, decay in her lower molars to the uh, periodontist. So going on to the telemonitoring. Telemonitoring is a process which is usually carried out when certain treatments 
require frequent monitoring of the treatment progress and this is pro sorry this is progress and treatment outcome so in our approach to monitor the status of orthodontic treatment we adapted the telemonitoring process so we allotted two days exclusively for orthodontic telemonitoring and per week and uh, in addition to that the pair we requested the patients to share an intraoral photograph of them these patients the, these photographs were eventually shared with the orthodontist for his opinion and review uh, in addition to this uh, since we were not able to meet the people in person and uh, provide more education the team developed oral health education flyers in vernacular language and it was circulated to them through whatsapp group on a monthly basis uh, along with that of after the telecons following the teleconsultation a follow up was carried out by the cbr workers that is community based rehabilitation worker to make more give more emphasis about the oral hygiene instruction to the patient and to make sure they follow them correctly so this is a sample of a data sheet maintained by the cbr worker where you could see the details of the patient and the date when he did the follow up all these are maintained by the cbr workers uh going to the data from jan 2021 to june 2021 nearly 138 patients were teleconsulted and this is a tabular column where you could see the number of patients in different age categories among the 138 patient teleconsulted we have found that 59 patients were in need of dental dental treatment 61 come uh, reported to have no dental problems and 18 were under orthodontic follow up and yet and the orthodontic and the oral health education flyers have been circulated to nearly 165 patients and now we are focusing on mobilizing and providing treatment to this category of people uh, so we have uh, our strategies are towards bringing those patients to the tertiary care centers where we can give them the appropriate required treatment uh, to self evaluate ourselves we also obtained verbal feedback from few pa a few patients and this is uh, one such feedback which was translated from our state language and finally the entire process was not an easy one during the process we faced few challenges like many people did not have the access to the smartphones even if they had the access to the smartphones during the pandemic uh, the children were left to their grandparents they were not able they did not have the knowledge of using the smart smartphones to uh, use the video calls In, even if they had the smartphones and have the knowledge there was internet connectivity issues so the calls uh, there were chances when the call get connected between the consultations and sometimes they may be in the field or outside but then the daylight may be more we could not visualize the oral cavity these are few problems we faced and for many people this was a new process where a doctor approaching them through a tele process so especially for kids when we were uh, taking our consultation and counseling they'd be surrounded by neighboring children and so they may not they become very apprehensive they don't respond to us properly or view us biased responses but in conclusion tele dentistry is a cost effective method of health promotion where we could cut down a large cost incurred by travel both for the patient and the caregiver and it provides us an opportunity for remote access and promoting health in uh, patient in unprecedented times and beyond and it helps us to triage patients for appropriate care so finally the take home message from our presentation is that periodic preventive care uh, from an early age helps us in uh, obtaining a good oral health advances in technology and digital communication has provided us an opportunity to adapt to novel innovative methods in remote access and reaching out to people for promoting oral care Uh, finally i would like to acknowledge all the team members of transforming faces for their continued support and cooperation in helping us serve the cleft community these are our references and with this positive note i would like to thank all the participants for your valuable time and patient hearing thank you lovely thank you dr banu priya um Wow, there is so much to cover there in those three components. Uh, there's issues around, you know, the mobile uh, moving, taking care to patients in these remote communities. There's issues around orthodontics, around dentistry, around COVID, uh, around triage. There's so much there, uh, and, and uh, so I'm looking forward for this time. I think we can focus in on any one of these, uh, any one of these threads, and, and and maybe all of them. So uh, there was a question from Professor uh, Michael Goldwasser to start off. Uh, really around some of these ideas around uh, 
uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll read his his comment or, or, or Professor Goldwasser, if you wanted to, to summarize it, but why don't you test patients with family members before exposing the staff to possible infections? So talk a little bit more about your your prevention methods and, and how you're addressing some of these, uh, these elements of COVID-19. I'm not sure who on the team is best to respond, but someone can jump in. Uh, who, can, can you just say that again, that question? Sure. Oh, certainly. Yes. It, just around the idea, uh, around testing patients and family members. So, so where does that idea fit in? What are some of the challenges around, you know, PCR testing or rapid testing? How are you addressing this in your, your prioritization about when a patient would go and see a, a dentistry or orthodontic professional? Um, actually the COVID testing, uh, process, uh, in the community, uh, you know, where we were rendering services, uh, was taken care of by the uh, government, uh, uh, the local uh, bodies, because there was a huge uh, setup which was created by the each of the state government, and all the three centers where we have offered services through teleconsultation process, they have their own local network in terms of COVID. Say uh, the way they test and the how the zones are isolated. Say, for example, if there were few patients in that community and that uh, street and that particular uh, area is uh, completely put a, a barricade and uh, uh, they, they don't allow any transport inside that place. So this is how they were managing the uh, COVID part. So we were not uh, uh, as a, a service provider from uh, 100 miles or uh, 90 miles or away from the location. So we were not directly involved in the uh, COVID testing uh, part. Um, uh, um, so that was completely a, a different uh, uh, process and it was completely under the control of the local uh, government officials, the public health officials in that region. Uh, Dr. Shiva, Dr. Vignesh, you want to add anything on that? Right, I want to add something. Now, uh, uh, not only that, now I can share my, uh, one, one personal information. Now, actually, my dad had uh, developed a cough and a productive cough. So I just went, took him to get a COVID test. The hospital officials told that you know, uh, he doesn't represent uh, COVID uh, symptoms, so we cannot do any COVID uh, testing. So uh, just a cough with a productive cough or a, a simple cough, uh, the authorities may not do uh, COVID testing. So that's one of the, uh, the difficulties that we face. Now I treat almost uh, in a week, on, a, uh, on a OP days, I treat almost 10 patients. Now, out of these 10 patients, three are come with productive cough. So uh, the only thing that I can do is uh, increase the level of alertness. And uh, <clears throat> there are some hidden things also. Now, well, uh, last week I had one patient. And usually when the patient come, uh, I ask them what is the emergency, try to attend to it in 10, 15 minutes, send them out. Okay. So uh, one patient, usually I don't talk much during this time. So one patient that came, she came with the discharge, arch wire, I just placed the wire. And I asked the question, I don't know why I asked this question. I asked her, whom did you come with? So she just said she came with an aunt. And then I asked her, why usually she comes with her mother. Why did you not come with your, why did you come with your aunt? She just said that uh, her mother has got fever. So it's like very difficult for us, you know, to get all the information and then to start, uh, because if it's an emergency, it has to be treated. So we make sure that we on the our side take all the necessary precautions rather than uh, depend on uh, all those tests because that's the emergency. If it's a surgery, they do a RT-PCR test. If it's an orthodontics, unfortunately, they are not willing to do an uh, RT-PCR test for this. Thank you, Dr. Shiva. Thank you, Dr. Mutu. Yes, so I think, uh, I mean, you know, we, we have people from around the world on this call. I think uh, the access to testing is a major challenge. Uh, and so we can see this, the steps that you are taking uh, in order to prioritize and, and limit exposure. But obviously there are some factors that are beyond the control of the team that you're wrestling with. I appreciate that, thank you. Um, other questions, I've seen some really positive comments. Someone, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ibrahim mentioning about how these challenges would be really applicable to somewhere like Malawi, uh, just dealing with large distances and, and pa patients in rural communities. Uh, that's an amazing encouragement, thank you. Who else has a question? Dr. Dr. Krishan Dendu, Dr. Chatterjee, please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Hugh. Thanks for the opportunity. It's very nice to see you. Uh, yeah. So uh, first of all, I wanted to comment on an amazing way telemedicine has been taken care of by the center. And uh, my question is to Dr. Subramaniam. It's a pleasure to hear from you, sir. 
I am Dr. Krishnendu from Kolkata, the ABMS is at Transforming All Thesis Center. So uh, I saw a case of yours where you did AMD and uh, the band had broken off from the appliance, from the screw. I had a very similar case and I wanted to ask a few things regarding the same. Uh, how long after do you think, uh, did you get to know from the patient that uh, the appliance had broken and uh, how did you manage? Because in my case, what I saw was there was an instant uh, shift in the in the anterior segment uh, and the whole anterior segment pu got pushed towards the affected side. And uh, we had to again rebuild the appliance on a very short notice. Uh, the patient never came up with any complaints. It was an uh, incidental finding because I was monitoring throughout. Uh, later on, when we finished the case, we still had that asymmetry. That asymmetry never went away. It was difficult to manage the, an asymmetrical uh, advancement for the AMD case. So if you could uh, shed some light on that, sir, that'd be great. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, usually what we do is we, we just scare the patients. Once it's a, it comes for surgery, we just scare them and the parents. So if there's any something minor problem, the first thing they will do is automatically they take the phone and then call us. So that that's the level of alertness that we want to do a surgical because if there's going to be a relapse, then the patient has to be taken to the ER again. It adds up to a lot of cost. So unfortunately for me, this patient had called within a week's time. And so there was a little bit of band which is holding onto the gums and gingiva. So the, the patient was in retention phase. So we never had a, actually a relapse in this case. So we were acting, acting fast and then we removed the dental intraoral distractor and replaced with another one. That is another difficulty because the bone is not formed and the patient is with pain and we need to fabricate a new band and then put a new distractor. That's a whole lot of story by itself. So first thing is you raise the level of alertness. So you scare the patient if you have to for the cause of good. Thank you, Dr. Shiva. Thank you, Dr. Chatterjee. We'll get to, to uh, Professor Tim Bressman in one second. Uh, one element that stood out in your presentation was the partnership with CBR workers. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of mobilizing someone who's close to the community in order to effectively engage uh, the care, the cleft care that you're providing? I'm not sure uh, who, who can nominate who's the right person to answer that. I but Manu, uh, you want to say how you, you how you coordinated with the speech therapy team and the uh, public health, uh, the who was in the field there, and how the tele uh, tele uh, WhatsApp video calls have been made? Can you just brief on that? Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Mutu. Um, actually, the, these CBR workers or the community-based rehabilitation workers, uh, these people have been working in the project area for quite a longer time from the, since the inception of this project. For longer time, they're working and they have been trained how to, they are the people who actually identify the cliff patients. They go into the village or the community and find out who are the, any, if the cleft patient is born or registered in the primary health centers, they identify those patients and they talk to them and they enlighten the patients about the activities carried out by us and they bring these people to Ramchandra for further treatment. So this, these, they act as a bridge between us and the community so that uh, it is like more, whatever it is, those pe uh, people tell to the patients, people are more accepting it. So anything we can, uh, through community-based uh, CBI workers, we can tell to them any, like uh, even the awareness we wanted to create, they act as a bridge, uh, bring, creating those awareness to those people. So here we thought they are the best partners who can even updating the contact details, many may be in their nearby areas so that those people are the ones who can be approached for the steroid dentistry process. So they are, since these people are very long away, uh, 200 miles away from us, we couldn't approach them. So they act as a bridge. They collected the uh, updated contact list of them. They talk with the patients before arranging for the teleconsultation, what the, the dentist would talk to them and how the process would go on. So all these activities were carried out by the CBR workers. And they also call us periodically. And as we are resuming our activities, once in a while, we call these workers, arrange for training sessions in our center regarding the oral health, speech therapy, all those things, because they have, they also needed to have some idea about how the activities are going on. So Thank these, you. These are the work carried out by the community-based workers. Thank you. Fantastic. So I think sometimes we think about outreach as primarily just to the families or patients building trust. But in this case, the Ramachandra team has had really to invest in building relationships with the government, et cetera, local workers to have this kind of partnership that can allow patients to really have that bridge. Uh, and that's something that really stands out about your approach. Thank you. Professor Tim, please. 
Sorry, I just have to find the mute button here. Um, thank you very much for this great presentation. And um, just a question that I had, uh, I'm, and I'm not sure whether it goes to Dr. Subramanian or to Dr. Banu, um, but a couple of years ago, I had the privilege of, of seeing the project in Thiruvannamalai and seeing the orthodontic clinic. And one um, thing that, that um, we discussed at the time that maybe is particularly relevant in the context of the oral health initiative that Dr. Banu was describing um, was that many of the kids um, for their dental care at home relied on, on chewing sticks, on mis mishwak uh, sticks, which, you know, are... are medicinal, but maybe not ideal uh, during a time when you also have an orthodontic appliance uh, in the mouth. And then the other um, problem, of course, uh, was um, water safety and access to, to clean water for oral health care, um, which is a problem that, of course, is much bigger than even, even Sri Ramachandran could, could address. Um, so I was wondering whether you have some, some comments on that, on the... Um, oral health in the in the home environment, especially of those patients in more rural environments. And I apologize for the long question. Okay. Thanks, Tim. I'm sorry if I, and uh, thank you, Tim, for your question. And uh, if I've understood your question uh, uh, properly, I think you mentioned about the neem stick, which the kids use to brush their teeth. Oh yeah. And uh, they are still uh, one of the popular ways of you know like uh, in the rural india if you go instead of a toothbrush and a toothpaste they use a neem stick they chew on it and then they brush it now uh, uh, we don't uh, i mean uh, for those patients uh, it's really you know it's um, amazing to see that they don't have any dental caries so uh, although uh, I, I mean uh, uh, there are a few companies corporate companies who now want to market it as an uh, uh, method of brushing the uh, tooth and uh, regarding that water safety i think uh, I will ask uh, Dr. Banupriya to answer the question. Uh, so, regard, I think uh, you were mentioning, are you mentioning about the fluoride content on the fluoride stains, fluorosis in the teeth of the patients? Or I'm not, I'm not sure. I think just, just the idea of, of more often, if a patient doesn't have access to clean water at home, how does that influence your dental approach? Um, basically, uh, one thing, uh, dental problem which occurs is mainly because of the content, uh, content of fluoride in the water, which may causes fluoro condition causes fluorosis, where we could see the hypoplasia of the teeth or the brownish discoloration of the teeth. In few villages where they take the use well water, the content of fluoride in well is by nature itself it's a higher level than the recommended PPM which we should take. So for that, uh, only the thing is we create awareness because as per our government setup, we don't have a proper uh, water uh, connection to all the people in rural areas. So still many people are using only well water. So from our side, the thing we could do is only create awareness to the people about the usage of water. And uh, this point also we could take in as a feedback we could take and uh, educate our community-based workers also to teach uh, people about all these things. Thank you. So yeah, just, as, as Sir Tim mentioned, a, a very, a, a large problem uh, beyond even, uh, you know, our CCC team, but glad to, to know that your team's engaging with that. Uh, we had one other element, and I'll get to Dr. Mutu in a second. Uh, Suraj, I'm not sure if you can comment on the interaction between uh, the oral and orthodontic team. We heard a lot about how they work hand in glove. How does, uh, how does the oral orth orthodontic outreach fit into speech therapy and other elements of comprehensive care there that uh, Ramachandra provides? Oh, we don't hear you, Suraj, for some reason. You know? Yeah, we got Hello? you. Yeah, so thank you for the time and I'll not take too much time. So we have an integrated approach, uh, you know, which has happened naturally. We did not build it, you know, in, in any phase. So how it happened was whenever an orthodontic team travel, a switch team always travel to the camp. Whenever a switch team travel, always an orthodontic travel to the camp. So they got to know that the patient should see both of them at the same time. And we built a relationship on what uh, I have worked with uh, Dr. Vignesh, who have initially started the program. And now for a long time, I'm working with Dr. Shiva. So in between us, we talk a lot on which patient needs to see Dr. Shiva and which patient needs to see us. And over time, you know, uh, we learned that we also have to see the younger babies. We never saw as a team together. 
so now we have brought in the public health dentistry and periodontic also on board so now the circle is actually now only it is complete it was a semi circle before and we are now trying to complete the circle so i think what we have learned is i and dr i can, you know if you have a moment finally to give it to dr vikram because he is the person who initially started the project where there was lot of uh, problems you know orthodontics is fixing breakages but the problem is always breakages so they can write one book story about breakages and how indian festivals can spoil orthodontic work so you know that is something which is a continuous problem which we face we have not made any special plan but the way we work i think has helped even an uh, our community worker has seen both of us work together in the field so they by by the way of seeing they know who should see shiva sir first and who should see me next so they send the patients to the respective consultation rooms even in our uh, community camps wonderful thank you so that intentional communication and overlap between as you mentioned the the different elements of the circle very important dr vinesh i think you were you were invited to to comment just briefly and then we'll hear from dr muthu yeah i think dr subramanian hit the nail on the head uh, they see all of us together this year was one big family and may i also add rupa madam and subramanian sir had this concept of having a diary with all our numbers so uh, they, the patients just, just just could call any one of us and say see i have this problem and my the actual uh, doctor was busy or i am not picking up the phone they'll call up subramanian they had the liberty uh, they, they saw all of us as one big happy family and, and they just could call us up in any emergency and one of us could you know then get back to doctor subramanian and i think the rupa madam's concept of you know this this diary and was was simply phenomenal so i think uh, uh, that's where it was it was a great uh, 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 team effort i must uh, compliment dr muttu and rupa madam and uh, swa for their wonderful work thank you dr thank Vinesh. you I'll, i'll yeah thanks thank you dr muttu please yeah uh, actually just i wanted to add a bit on what dr banu was telling uh, how the social worker in the community helped us to bridge the gap in terms of in fact they were speaking to the patient family scheduling the appointments uh, along with the coordinator from speech therapy so there was a fixed time i think it was in the, either in the morning 11 to 1 or in the afternoon 2 to 4 and in that time frame they have checked with the local community which patients are available at the time so we could have two or three phone calls uh, largely whatsapp video calls and the coordinator was there the family and the child and also we have sent our uh, residents the postgraduate residents or the orthodontic residents on rotation based on the age group and and whether the child is under treatment or not so that also helped us to schedule things and uh, you know make uh, even though uh, it's a, a remote uh, a location uh, we could uh, do the pretty uh, effectively and uh, thanks to covid because uh, bec- uh, without that i don't think we would have embraced a digital technology like this uh, and which is really really uh, needed for a country like india so that's it. just uh, some few what a, what a, what a great place to land dr muthu thank you uh, and i think we've heard so much innovation on all these different fronts of communication of teamwork of technology of uh, prioritization and uh, triage in terms of covid uh, you know it is abstract season i'm wondering when we're going to see a uh, you know a, a paper proposal uh, you know maybe at cleft 2022 from this team i think there's lots there that would be worth studying so uh, that's just a friendly nudge <laughs> aniti where are we going from here i know we we, we promised to wrap up at 9 uh thank you dr ester glad you could join us uh and others we're just uh saying if you'd like to hear the recording as was mentioned in the uh, chat it will be online you can look at circle of flap professionals on youtube it will be posted later uh, we are also on twitter and you can email us at any time if you have colleagues who who need to hear about this and you want to talk about it with your team uh please do we would love this to continue to be a learning resource and stimulate more change uh in innovation in places like india or anywhere in low and middle income country, country contexts that's our goal Uh thank you to all our presenters it was very inspiring uh so much uh distilled in just a short time and thank you for the excellent questions that we've heard Just please stay tuned Niti uh we'll, we'll have more webinars coming up yeah Oh you're on mute <laughs> sorry about that yeah so absolutely we'll be uh, likely having our next webinar in november uh, it's going to be an interesting one on the cleft collective research so look forward to that and we'll uh, be sending across the information for that very soon and you shall have it in your in- inboxes uh, soon so yeah thank you everyone thank you everyone Bye-bye. see you next time thank you very much.